first started using PV equipment well over 35 years ago when I played in a working band. And though I'm just playing for the fun of it now, I still want an amplifier that can kick some butt, and the PV still fits that bill. The PV Valve King 112 certainly exceeds my needs, but it has everything I need to have some fun and experiment a little. First up on the front panel, next to the dual inputs, are the clean channel controls. All of these controls are very effective and lets you set this thing up to play anything from a nice smooth rhythm to a real sharp twang if you want to do that. The bright button enhances the high end edge while the channel selector takes you to the lead channel. Along with the volume and equalizer controls you find a gain dial. This lets you add whatever level of distortion you want to the sound created by the other controls. And for when you really need to get people's attention, you have buttons that can boost both the gain and the volume. The reverb dial lets you control how much of the twin spring reverb effect is added to both of the channels. The buffered effects loop lets you add your favorite stomp box to the clean or lead channels. And the Valve King even has a real standby that keeps the tubes warmed up while you take a break. And the rear control panel has even more stuff, but a lot of this stuff is things that we won't be adjusting all the time. It's kind of you figure out what tone you want and you leave it set that way. So they can put it back here and free up room on the front panel. The texture control lets you vary the sound from the class A lower power to the AB class where you use all of the tubes cranked wide open. The resonance button lets you control the low end tones and how clear they are with the rest of the sound. And this ventilated metal casing on the back protects the tubes from you and you from the tubes. And a little below that is a specially voiced 12 inch Valve King loudspeaker. I always liked the full clean sound my PV equipment made and this new Valve King is no different. If anything they've managed to coax a little more tone range and power out of these speakers. And finally I was really proud to see this double spring reverb box in the bottom of the amp. I know there's all kinds of digital reverbs out there, but I still think a couple of springs still sound better. Of course all of this doesn't mean squat it, this thing doesn't sound good when you plug it in and turn it on. So now we get to play with it a little bit. Gain the clean channel, I'm going to turn the bright off, we'll go to the neck pickup like you're going to play rhythm, we want a nice smooth but not a lot of high end. <laughs> And I'll turn on the bright. And you can control all of that with the EQ settings also. We'll do a little lead lick that you've all heard. We'll do it in the clean and then go to the lead and show you the difference with a little distortion added. to the clean channel and we'll turn the master reverb off. Now we'll open up the springs all the way. I like that 
sound. And that's really about everything on the front end here. You can do a lot with this amp if you just take the time to learn to see where you want the EQ settings, how much distortion you want, and where you want the lead channel set. And you go through the texture and that presence button, you can fine tune all that even more. And all of that's really hard to depict on a video like this. So you're going to have to get one yourself and try it. Thank you.